Hi and welcome to this five-step tutorial on how to train a TensorFlow model for image recognition using ROS Development Studio. So first step. The first step is going to theconstructsim.com and click on ROS Development and here go to get started, sign in or sign up, whatever you need to do. When you do this, you'll end up in this web page where you have your personal projects and then the public projects. So in this, in, in my projects, you go and say, create new project. And let's say my AI test, I don't know, create. Fantastic. Once you have it, you just have to click open project. Okay, once we have it, let's say nope. And you'll be greeted with this empty space, workspace. We go, we open the ID and we see that we have several workspaces so all all our files that we need for the training will be in the ai workspace so this comes ends the first step we have our project ready second step is to put inside the ai workspace all the files needed for the training so you can get your files from whatever you want from whatever you want i'll get them from our git that we have several examples i'll leave all the links in the comments in the in the description below so i'm going to open a shell go to my ai workspace i'll clone okay we have our files downloaded so now I'll see what we have. Let's go here, maybe you can see it better. So we have several image files, several um, models and so on. So I'll just leave a few examples. There we go. So now uh, I've left two sets of images, one that it's called images one labels and one that it's called images raccoon. And then we have a folder where we have our model, TensorFlow model and our config files. So here you can create them here in the IDE, of course, or you can um, upload them with a uh, Git or with here, you go here and say file, upload local files and you can upload them from your computer, anything you want, okay? And basically you can edit whatever you want. In this case, I would edit, I don't know, the batch size maybe. The batch size, for example, I'll stay I don't know, like, let's, let's put it like two. It doesn't matter really. You put it on the configuration that you want. Just bear in mind that if you're a free user, of course you have lower uh, power instances. Uh, if you're a, a paying user of, of ROS Development Studio, then you have more, more power and you can have bigger batch sizes and also you can have bigger images, of course. Otherwise, it's highly probable that if you, do, if you work with images too big or ba batch sizes too big, then it will probably and kill the process because you won't have uh, enough juice yeah so there you go one extra feature that we have also installed here in ROS development studio is that in your folder of images that has to have this configuration to work so one folder name of the folder and then test and train you see that you have images but also you have xml's 
these XMLs are generated using uh, a program called label image. Of course, I, I think there are many more programs that you can, you can do this, but I'll show you how to do, uh, do it with label image. Basically, you have this, I don't know, raccoon image, which as you can see, all the images are quite small, which makes the learning, the training much faster. And if, for example, you want to generate a box for the training, you just call table image. Then you can open uh, the graphical tools. And inside here, You, let's put it a bit bigger. You can open the directory, the images. For example, let's get the one of the coon test, choose. And inside here, you can put uh, the boxes that you want, let's say. So I want here to put a raccoon or whatever you want. You can set it here. Okay, let's, for example, let's put it here. You can see it a bit better. So here, for example, you go here and you say, okay, I want to, uh, let's delete this and put a box. This is a raccoon. You write here raccoon or the label that you chose for this. And then you hit okay. And then you save it. Okay. And then it, it will save the XML file. Uh, yeah, I don't want to save this in this case. So now once we have this, so your images, your, your models, which it will be a folder with the model, which has a graph pbtxt and so on. And then the config file, you only need these three, these three things. We come to the third step, which is we select the files for the training. For that, you go to Tools, Start TensorFlow Image Learning, and inside here, you will have all the options that you have. So training image folders, we have in this case two, the images raccoon and images labels. Let's get, let's get for example, images raccoon. Then the model folders, which in this case we only have one and config we only have one. So we hit next and this is the fourth step which is training. Once you hit next it will start a process of learning by itself and in this case you'll get, let's put it here, so in this case until the learning process has generated enough data, you won't have any tensor board data, as you can know. If you know anything about tensor boards, tensor flow, you'll see that you don't have any data until you, it passes a, a certain amount of time where enough J data is generated and is generated the first point, let's say. So we'll wait for that. Okay, there we go. So now we have, in this case, we can, for example, see the model that we're using. So let's have a look. We are using this model. You can zoom in and see all the process that are used and so on. But the most important part in learning and training in this case is go to scholars. And inside here, we have our first data, which is not very important in this case, but now we have to wait and train the, the, tens the tensor uh, flow model until we are satisfied with the error. So here, after a few, a few seconds, we have more data generated. So we can see the total loss, which now we only have two points, so we don't have a lot of data. We have the batch. We have also the queues and the global step and all the data that you could you would have in TensorBoard. 
So now it's just a, a matter of essentially watching this total loss. Let's maximize it and see the wall. So we'll see the time we started and the time the the most recent data point that we have of learning. So you, you want to have a total loss of around one more or less, two, depends. Well, it depends on your application, of course, but when it stabilizes, basically when it stabilizes the, the value of the total loss, more or less your model has learned what it ha can learn. Okay, so you'll have to wait until you have the value that you want. And when you have it, then comes the fourth step and final step. Once you have the total loss that you want, so in this case, it's too big to stop it, but we'll stop it here for, for making it fast. You go to here, tools, and you see that this has changed to stop TensorFlow image learning and export learn model to AI workspace. Okay, so we hit, and we'll have to wait a few minutes until we have a folder. So there you have it. So here is, you see that it was generated still. It was generating the, the data still, but basically what it does is export all the, the freeze, the most recent and TensorFlow model and put it in this convenient learned model um, folder. And with this, especially the frozen in inference graph, PB and so on, you will be able to do image recognition with this. So now you can use it for um, recognizing raccoons in this case, okay? But basically because we did like, like minutes of training, the, the model will be very bad. If you want to learn more about how to, to use this and how to integrate it with ROS, please go to Robot Ignite Academy and have a look at our course on uh, TensorFlow and how to integrate it with ROS. And yeah, that's it for this quick tutorial. So please leave a thumbs up if you like the video and please subscribe for having more uh, opportunities to see ROS related content videos and things related to robotics. So thank you and see you soon. Bye.